Hello. Hello, Professor Curtis Bennett. Welcome to the call. Hello, Diane. Hi. Well, how are you? Doing better and better. The more I'm in contact with you, the better I feel and the better my life gets. Who would have thought there would have, thought there would have been a post uh, like there just was regarding Cuba? Oh, isn't that sad? That they still don't understand? Ridiculous. And It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, you know, that, that toxins would would cause, uh, like, brain trauma, literal, literal physical damage to the brain. Well, I suppose in the most severe cases it could. You, you get a minute. For this trauma they're talking about to cause physical brain damage, you need that electromagnetic, fo- electro- electromagnetic force, like of a wireless going through your head, uh, to cause that trauma. You know, just the toxins themselves would would mess you up, but they're not going to cause that physical damage uh, to your head. Okay, good. There's nobody that's got your understanding of how deeply. The RF EMFs are harming us in all life and infrastructure. That electricity is pretty handy stuff. I know what you're doing. And, and, uh, and, and this is being recorded right now, isn't it? Yes. And this is just for people that are going to be listening to this. CBC Canada just reported that, uh, you know, there's a new study out that it was neurotoxins or Cuba fumigating uh that caused uh, the the brain trauma to uh, U.S. and Canadian embassy workers and their family, um, where where before this they were blaming a portable sonic weapon, which is ridiculous. Uh, there would have been damage to the building. And Cuba, you know, has been so oppressed. Uh, you know, nobody would have something like that. And like I say, you would have damage to the building everywhere. So it's uh, you know, here's just another shot at this. And actually, it was kind of nice to dig into this today because. I found out that the embassy embassy workers are suing Canada, and, uh, and rightly are. so. But yeah, yeah. Took the words right out of my mouth. I agree with you 100%. But that, that's the thing with Wi-Fi. And I just want to clarify that for people, too, that are talking about the safety of Wi-Fi in these classrooms. EMFs going through you and entering your body are an electromotive force. So you think about a kung fu movie where somebody's punching right through your head, right through your body, through your organs, through your blood, uh, through every part of you, Uh, never mind all the other uh, associated problems uh, with changing frequencies in your body and uh, the high-speed vibrations and all the above. Mm -hmm. We had a number of questions. I'm I'm looking forward to those questions. I'm looking forward to those questions. They are popping up in the event on Facebook. I've scheduled a number of them staggered every se- every se- several minutes. So we have um, three guest questions that have already appeared in the post. Are you able to go on to the event and look under discussion? I want to just give me the, can you give me the question? Okay, I'll read you the questions. Do that. That'd be better because this way, you know, it's really important for people mm-hmm. to know this. You know, I didn't get any questions up front, and I, and quite frankly, if I know what I'm talking about, I shouldn't need them up front. So this is actually better for you to read them to me, and maybe if you want to say who's got the question, that's up to you. Okay, a lady in the UK, and I know that it's not a true, accurate name, says a few city councils on UK and Ireland have halted 5G. Here's one. Totnes, just a small town, and then she gives a link to 5Gawareness.com, Totnes town to impose 5G moratorium. And she's asking about can the um, small towns and uh, counties and the cities override the government of the UK. Can the small towns and governments override them? That's your question. Yes. Uh, the answer is yes, but they but they won't have to. You know, this is what's really important that where you live 
you know, that your city or your area has a jurisdiction, like a literal geographical boundary uh, where that property line is, and you've got maybe a governing body uh, associated with that. These electromagnetic fields are illegal at any level of government. It doesn't matter whether a government wants to push forward with this or not, thinking that it's safe, they cannot do this. Um, the ramifications are that, uh, you know, you will call, and I, I want to clarify this too. When I'm talking about this, I'm representing the banks, the lenders, the insurance companies, uh, the governing bodies, not political parties. That's got nothing to do with this. Codes and standards and what makes this so important you're going to cause buildings, you're just going to cause liabilities that are just going to be catastrophic and you will not have insurance for that. You will cause the high speed vibrations of buildings, causing them to be non-compliant with any building code. And when I talk about these vibrations, if people think about a battery, now take a, just a AA battery or something you would put in a flashlight and take a look at it. You can see there's a plus on one side and there's a minus on the bottom. Imagine taking that battery and flipping it end for end, billions of times per measurable second, and that's what you would do to concrete. That's what you would do to drywall or fire separations. Uh, that's effectively what you're going to do to your body. And buildings are not designed for that. The only building designed for, the, for radio frequencies and electromagnetic interference is an MRI chamber, and we all couldn't afford an MRI, cha MRI chamber. That's why we have buildings designed for their environment now without this uh, electromagnetic field, uh, uh, electromagnetic fields just violating every part of the, of the building, never mind what they're doing to your bodies inside. The health effects, uh, they're going to kill, the, these EMFs can and will kill you. They will induce electrical currents into you, which is absolutely illegal. There are no situations where electricians would induce electrical current into anybody because the current kills. That's exactly what we try to do in everything we're doing is make sure that any current, like a lightning bolt, it's got to pass to ground without coming through you. So, you know, these jurisdictions will work together. They were just not duly informed that the science was not there. Uh, Canada, as a matter of fact, and a shame on my own country for having to report this. Our job on this end here was to report through our jurisdictions. This is what we do as, as professionals. We don't blindside our government. We don't uh, try to trick them up. We report through the government, not political parties. You know, the politics has got nothing to do with this. These guys have to do their jobs, or otherwise they get to be accountable. So what we did is reported through you know, our municipality, and we reported through our, pro our provincial government, then we reported through our federal government. Canada's politicians from top to bottom did not do their jobs. Our municipal authority here, city manager's response was this to me, Curtis, you make our management feel defensive. And I said, where is that in building code? Because we're not trying to make him feel defensive. He's just an overpaid uh, uh, part. He's overpaid and part of that weak and professional gene pool and just not doing his job because we're telling them this based on, you know, uh, you know, their jobs as they will be. That's what building code is. That's what codes and standards are. The government of British Columbia under Gordon Campbell, Gordon Campbell did not do his job. He did not, uh, he did not deal with this. He might have passed it on forward, but Gordon Campbell's also the same premier that edited the public fire inquiry and edited me out of that fire inquiry because we embarrassed his office in 2003 uh, during an interface fire with, with inter, interface force fire in Kelowna. Then this went to our prime minister's office, who is our, our prime minister, which is, Gore, which is uh, Stephen Harper at the time. Now this went to Health Canada. Stephen Harper is the prime minister of Canada and therefore he is administering the government of Canada. You know, uh, we don't have a progressive conservative code or a liberal code or a new Democrat code or the Green Party code or an independent code. Harper did not do his job in any capacity. As a matter of fact, that arrogant little, I can't even use the language that I would use on this guy because I'm looking forward to, you know, possibly getting to do a citizen's arrest on him at the time because he's going to be accountable for what he's done. 
Zelensky did not pass on this information to the United States, uh, uh, to the UN, to any governing bodies beyond Canada. All they did was mass install these meters, uh, mass install this wireless because it's considered innovative instead of uh, it's extremely dangerous and it was never tested properly and the codes admitted. Uh, they've got, imagine this. Harper did this while well, the same exposure code admitted that it had errors and emissions in it. You don't have codes that say, hey, we don't understand anything, but you go ahead and move forward anyways. We'll figure that out later on. They never should have moved forward with any aspect of this uh, code. And I want to clarify this too. In 2015, Canada revised a safety code 6, that's a, and that's the same exposure guidelines used around the world for radio frequency, EMFs. Um, Harper was still in office at the time. The idea that this despicable excuse for a human being and an elected official actually revised Safety Code 6 2009 while the Fortis BC application was going on for smart meters, while they were mass installing uh, wireless uh, and Wi-Fi in parks and all over Ontario and all the above. And so they were just going to rubber stamp anything anyways, but Harper is just going to have to understand this. He's going to go to jail. You know, people died. Uh, you know, effectively what he did is he committed treason. You can't undermine your country. And, and the Auditor General's Act is very straightforward on this and what sustainability is. And, Diane, you've seen that. It's just some very short paragraphs and very sweet and simple. And on top of that, we are also, you know, a part of the monarch, which is the Queen of England, or, or, or the monarch, which is England. And Queen Elizabeth um, is the manager of that account. So the lieutenant governors of the provinces and the lieutenant governor of Canada manages their affairs in Canada. The Queen is not going to forgive Harper for what he's done in undermining her her assets, her subjects, and all the above that go with this. And this is why we warned them specific to that liability. <clears throat> and Harper should have done his job. That's the bottom line. Yes. I can't agree with and you the more. the same thing with those jurisdictions there. Your jurisdictions have to work together, and they do, regardless of political parties or those interests. It's even disgusting today for me to listen to media, and all media is reporting on is, here's what a conservative strategist thinks when there's an election coming up. Who gives a crap? It's got nothing to do with anything. Politics does not belong in government. They do not, they should not be running the government of the people in any capacity. So the laws are going to be the same over there in the UK or otherwise. They will do their jobs because once buildings are no longer compliant with building code, banks will not finance them. You will not get lending. You will lose your investment. Yes. That's going and to create a national security issue. And the exclusion from the insurance companies is called Exclusion 32. Anyone yes, who wants and, to look and, that up. And the important thing about the exclusion is this, is people said, you know, Curtis, why would insurance companies not uh, insure this? I've worked for insurance companies, and our consulting has been with insurance companies and industries, you know, over decades. The thing is with this, when you've got an exposure code that admits that it's missing critical science, Insurance companies are not going to insure anything that's missing science. They will never pick up a liability. Everybody knows this. Insurance companies do not like to pay out money. They'd, they, they'd rather you just send in your premiums and they never have to deal with you after that. So that's what I mean. This never should have happened. So insurance companies are not going to pay out on this. And people need to get involved with this. You know, you're, you're not hypersensitive. These EMFs are hurting you. Your properties are threatened. It is building code. You, if anybody has seen this, you've seen the plastic head, which is the specific absorption rate. It isn't science. It should be an aquarium. Uh, it's ridiculous what they've done with this uh, wireless, but that's what, uh, that's what happens when greed and exceptional stupidity get together. Right on. We have another question, Mike Seacard. He has two parts of his questions. He says, why does EMF exposure give off symptoms of other diseases, and why is the country of Pakistan less affected by EMFs? Well, you know, and, and this is a very good question, because right now, I'm, uh, you know, here's what's kind of ironic. Right now, I just got an email from Jer Jeremy Johnson. 
Now, Jer- I think I've got his name right. Jeremy Johnson was part of that EMF summit uh, that went on in California right now. And uh, so he got questions on the same issue is how come they're putting, uh, they're using fiber optics, but people with what they call an electrohypersensitivity are still feeling symptoms and they're getting worse. So he actually tagged me and sent me an email and wants me to respond to that, and I'm going to, but they're not going to necessarily like the response. You've got to remember there are so many factors uh, to this that, uh, you know, just your orientation to the field uh, 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 changes the parameters on this. Uh, uh, the power density, every time you have a change in power density or an increase in power density, you're going to have more damage. Um, uh, the size of your body, uh, there's so many factors. The, you know, your, the toxic load in your body. Humans are not a good conductor. So you're yeah, going to have... A, a, wellness factors, like, the, well, like nutrition and hydration. N- n- nutrition, hydration. And right now in Pakistan and places like that, they haven't layered this technology on like they're going to. Whereas mm-hmm. what they're doing, in, like in Canada, here's an example with Fortis, B.C., Fortis, B.C. admitted under oath. Now, here's it here again. I cross-examined them for three, their experts for three and a half hours. They chose not to cross-examine me. And these are in B.C. government uh, uh, utility commission hearings. Uh, Mark Warren took exception to me saying that, uh, you know, their smart meters would hurt people. He said you can be 20 centimeters, which is between seven and eight inches away from their smart meter and safe. They left out the grid. So the grid is, you know, the one antenna is reaching one point, uh, pardon me, two to three kilometers or 1.8 miles, one antenna. Mm-hmm. Now and then when, when Mark said, we object to you uh, 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 saying that we're going to hurt people, I said, are you going to cover 17,000 square kilometers with these electromagnetic fields? And he said, I thought we made that perfectly clear, yes. That means they've made a 17,000 square kilometer man-made microwave oven. That's the equivalent of a 6,564 square mile man-made microwave oven because, oh, this wireless is just so innovative that let's just layer it on everywhere so we can all use it because it gives the illusion of being cheaper because instead of wiring something, it's like a school. We've, we've talked about this, and this is really important. Uh, the reason schools and everything did this is this, is that to wire a school to hardwire a school in 30 different computer stations is going to cost you, you know, $30,000. You're going to have a construction company come in there. They're going to. There's a lot of work involved with that. It has to be done properly. Uh, You want it hardwired. Where somebody else comes in and says, listen, I'll do it for $3,000, and we'll just put our router above the ceiling, and then we can just radiate the entire building, and, and it's all good. You can just hook up wirelessly, except it means you're in the electrical circuit. So countries like Pakistan, and as they say, you know, holy macro, this is why this needs to be stopped as well, is because we do not want them using this wireless like this. It is incredibly dangerous. That is the missed economy. So, you know, just layering it on with different levels, uh, the coverage areas, uh, there's so many different factors with this, but what we've done in North America especially is is just horrific. In other parts of the world, they're doing this as well, and even, uh, uh, but these other countries, not so much yet, but it's got to be stopped, because even radiating, radiating the atmosphere like this from uh, the surface up, the planet, uh, the surface of the planet up, and, 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 and satellites down, you can, you can absolutely tie this into hurricanes and this horrific weather that's going on, because you're heating the atmosphere. These are microwaves. Okay, and there's another part to that. Yes. He says, different countries are all hardwired, knowing this wireless frequencies com- crime and the resulting life effects. Why don't they do something to help those countries that continue to use wireless frequencies to radiate everything? That's a very good question, but this is what happens, when, again, when you get this collective uh, weakened professional gene pool and you get politicians and special interests. Because as an example with, you know, Prime Minister Harper, that sleazy, sleazy, sleazy prime minister and poor excuse for a leader here, you know, he sold out because wireless is just growing so fast where they go, holy mackerel. Imagine if you're, if you're trying to invest in something and somebody says, hey, there's this new technology and it is growing by a trillion dollars a year. 
So we better get in on the bottom line. Well, we can do this because we can make a lot of money on this. And this is what they've allowed to do. And so the telecom industry, these guys have paid off politicians. They've, uh, you know, paid off, donated to political parties, uh, where we don't have that in industry whatsoever. You know, I actually had, you know, a couple of different people try to bribe me or uh, attempt to do such a thing as that. And I just not only warned them about, you know, what I would do to them, including kicking their ass royally. You don't lobby anybody like that. You can't do that. There's no way in the world any special interest group should be able to go to a political party and say, hey, we will donate money to you, but here's what we want out of you, and you guys can get percentages of this. But here's the bottom line for that part of the question, too. The elite and the perceived you know, uh, wealthy of the world, what they've really done is they've undermined themselves with this, with their greed and stupidity. Um, because it will it will be stopped because it's illegal. Uh, they will not. They'll be sued to extinction. They will be going to jail. And uh, but that's the bottom line. They sold out, and that's why people have to hold them accountable. Your elected officials are your elected representatives. They were hired and retained to do their job, and they have to do that regardless of a political party or agenda. And like I say, that's the same thing in Canada right now with uh, even Pr- Prime Minister Trudeau, what he's done. And, uh, you know, his government's no different than the last one. It's just, uh, you know, same poop, different pile. Oh, dear. Right. We have a member who is um, asking three questions. Her name is Lisa Bruman. Question number one. There is a real intelligence organization for the U.S. government. Diego, that persists, predicts massive global depopulation, bracket 50 to 80 percent, close bracket, by 2025. Why and how do they know of such a catastrophe? And then there's a link to this organization. Here's what's really important with this, and I really want to stress this with people because it really scares a lot of people. And when they talk about Agenda 21 and they talk about, you know, here a lot of people say, Curtis, their plan is to depopulate the earth. These guys are being technically overwhelmed by a plastic head. You know, they can't depopulate anything. They don't know what the heck they're talking about with any aspect of this. And and here's the thing, too. Imagine... Lisa, you and me and your family and everybody we know get together and say, hey, let's depopulate the earth, but we have to kill ourselves too. There is nobody exempt from this and who's going to kill this. They are not going to target selective people. Imagine Fortis, B.C. Fortis, B.C. is admitted under oath. We're going to radiate several cities, regional districts, and native bands, and that would effectively kill everybody in that coverage area. All your taxpayers... You kill your taxpayers, you kill your economy. Well, I I don't know what the end game is all about because there's not going to be any food. There's not going to be anything. So although there might be these elitist idiots that think that they can actually do that, and I can imagine some of these guys get together and say, hey, you know, we're overpopulated and all the above, but uh, it's just a bunch of nonsense. These guys, you know, couldn't grab their butt with both hands because they really don't know what they're doing. So I wouldn't get too worried about that. And, And imagine this, they put a date on it too. Yes. These guys are overwhelmed by a plastic head with water in it. Mm-hmm. And what the heck do they know about a date or a time or an agenda or anything else like that? You know, that shows how collectively stupid the world is. Uh, Diane, and I, and I would say this to anybody, if somebody b- brought a plastic head into your office and said, um, hey, this is what we're using to show the safety of wireless and that it's not going to hurt people and that we're going to use this to bypass every jurisdiction that there is. We're going to bypass all codes and standards and laws, uh, uh, police, it doesn't matter who it is. And I've already told people this. If somebody would have brought that to my office, I would have told them, listen, uh, I, would, I would have said, listen, I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to get the hell out of my office. I said, but I'm going to keep this. And I, I'd ask them, I'd say, with that plastic head, I'd say, do you have a version with it? It's clear. I said, because I'm going to buy it from you because I want to put a goldfish in it because that's mm-hmm. all it would be good for. It is just a piece of junk. Uh, the idea that they did this based on thermal effects only. Well, hey, we're not heating water like in a microwave, so therefore it's got to be safe. We can't detect the water. We can't detect any heat. 
So here's the thermal effects. This is what everything is based on thermal effects instead of the fact of this. This is inducing electrical currents into you, which creates heat. It's also causing high-speed vibrations of every part of you, which is producing heat. You know, uh, you, can't, you can't do this. You put a cup of coffee in a microwave, we know it heats up. This is what they based all this garbage on. And, and, and keep this in mind, too. The specific absorption rate test is that plastic head with liquid in it, and it shows the foam bracket away from the head. Um, so they did this, uh, and imagine when they did this. This was done because cell phone manufacturers have to submit their phones for testing. What they don't tell you is this. The phone's not hooked up to a network. Dead phone, all they do is power it up and turn it on, and then they just hold it out. It's on that bracket a little bit away from the head, and then they just say, hey, you know, is this doing any harm? No, but you left out the antenna, which is like leaving out the gun. You left out the electromagnetic field, which is like throwing a bullet at somebody without using a rifle. And the same thing with Wi-Fi. Imagine this, and this is for real. Tony Muck offered, uh, authored the code, and he's a physicist. And here's another reason why they should not talk over their areas of expertise. When I talked to Tony after I heard his ridiculous report for Simcoe County, he actually reported to the school and, and uses this analogy. Children are not laying their heads on the laptop. So think of the stove element analogy. They're not laying their heads on the laptop, so therefore they're not being burned. They're sitting up. So they've got more than that one inch away from the plastic head uh, to do this. But they left out the routers, bathing the whole entire classroom and putting the classroom, the children, the teachers, uh, anybody in the classroom, as well as the buildings and infrastructure inside an electromagnetic field that is very dangerous. It means you're in the electrical circuit, and we're not uh, electrically uh, compatible with that. And, and, and think about with smart meters. Mark Warren, these guys, these absolute morons that, you know, these guys sold their credentials. And I, and I can actually relate to that because I'm sure that there's a couple of my classmates that, listen, they were just uh, not the sharpest tools in the shed. And instead of just being hardworking guys to get better, I'm sure they sold their credentials so that they could do what they do. But Mark Warren actually makes that analogy, too, that uh, he would say, Diane Knight, you're not outside with your head next to the meter. You're inside, so you're safe. But oops, we left out that antenna reaching, uh, you know, two to three kilometers plus the Wi-Fi antenna that is uh, that is uh, uh, going to be for the 30, 40, or 50 different portable devices they want to put inside your building. And all the neighborhood. And all the neighborhood. You know, the liability they've created. Um, and, and here, I, I can tell people this too. Listen, we just dealt with a legal issue with... Uh, with somebody in Nanaimo yesterday. I'm not going to mention his name or do those things, but uh, they retained us specific to BC Hydro cutting off their power and mm -hmm. threatening them that they're going to put a smart meter on their building. So they he refused the meter, and he said, I'm not taking it. Well, BC Hydro sent him a, a notice and said, listen, if you don't allow us to put that meter on your building, um, we're going to cut off your power. Uh -huh. Yesterday, my day was dealing with BC Hydro and the, and the electrician that, that, that was there to do that. And I warned him. I said, you're an electrician. And I said, and you know, you should know better. We cannot put an illegal meter on that building. You cannot cut off their power and extort them to put an illegal device on their building. And when the owner said, he said, Curtis, I feel bad about this, but I've got a, uh, here's my work order from BC Hydro. I said, I'm, I'm telling you again, warning you about liability. Well, he said, uh, we have to do it. So when they went to go, we were, we were anticipating this because this is how dirty the process has, has gotten. But I told them, I said, you phone the police. I said, you phone the police right now? Well, the police didn't want to respond. And I said, you demand the police and the RCMP show up. Well, the RCMP showed up, and here was this lackadaisical policeman that didn't know anything in the world about anything. He refused to talk to me on the phone. But uh, he told them, listen, this is a civil matter extortion and putting a murder device on your building isn't a, a civil matter. So when this lackadaisical RCMP didn't do his job, but he did get, he got very angry because the owner has said, you demand a file number because this is going to be a criminal liability issue. So the policeman gave him the file number. And then after that, I phoned uh, his, his supervisor who said to me, he said, Curtis, this is a civil matter. And I said, it is not a civil matter. 
he just wanted to get louder, and he said, we're not going back and forth. And I said, you're not electrically qualified in any opinion. Right. I said, if I, induce, if I induce current into my neighbor and kill them, is that a civil matter? He said, no. I said, this is not a civil matter. And he just wanted to yell and say, listen, this isn't going to happen. Well, now we're dealing with his watch commander. We're dealing with the municipality. Uh, we're dealing with the city council. We're dealing with their city management. We're dealing with their engineers. And we're going to kick their ass because you can't do this. Here's the code rule across Canada, 4.1.3.6 called vibration. That city will have to shut down because their buildings will no longer be compliant with building code. But they've already mass installed these meters as it is. So BC Hydro extorting people and forcing you to take a, a, a device and put it on your building that's combustible outside your fire separations. It's plastic. Uh, even the meter base enclosure isn't designed to house a computer, which is what the meter is. It's not insulated. You're going to create a weather system inside that meter base itself. So this is what we're doing legally, and make no mistake about this, how we're ramping this up, because, uh, you know, I'm just madder than a one-legged man in an ass-kicking contest. Mm -hmm. So yesterday would be... We're going, to reverse, but we're going to reverse these applications. You make no mistake about this. Uh, the law is the law, and we are the electrical law. So what you did yesterday would be a turning point. It's all, it's all going to be a turning point, but, you know, this is the unfortunate thing that's been created by politicians. I, I think even in our area here, I heard in Kelowna that people went to the RCMP station to complain and file a complaint. Um, imagine this. They were even told, we don't want to listen to you. Get out. Mm -hmm. And they just literally told them to leave the precinct, and you can't do that. And here's the thing for police to think about, too. Their own buildings have burned down. This is killing their own members, their own families. Fire department, the same issues and all the above. First responders, all the above. They need to pay attention. And police need to just, they need to not be lazy about this because just because they don't understand the crime doesn't mean they don't have to investigate. You cannot, th imagine throwing a wire into the neighbor's yard but it's a live wire and then watching grandma grab it and get a shock and it kills her. You know, you're going to go to jail. The criminal act. You cannot, you cannot, under any circumstances, put people in an electromagnetic field and kill them, uh, interfere with them, uh, uh, cause their babies to mutate. Uh, I mean, it's just despicable what they've done with this. But uh, listen, you know this, and you've read this. The Auditor General of Canada is not laughing. Right. And they're going to unleash the audit team from hell. And never mind that, the Queen of England. Have you ever seen her smile too much? She's going to be one angry, angry person. I wouldn't want to deal with her when she's angry. But they're going to jump into this because, uh, listen, it's, uh, you, can't, you can't do this. You will bankrupt uh, countries. You will, you will create serious national security issues. And here's what people need to think about with this. When buildings are no longer compliant with building code in a city or jurisdiction, it means you're going to lose the entire tax base associated with that when you pay your building taxes. Those taxes go towards school, police, fire, uh, all your services and education and health and all the above. Well, you're going to lose all of that. Plus, you will lose your investment. So people have to take this very seriously, even though they say, we're just radiating you just a little bit. The deck phone study um, was very serious about this. The, the exposure limits in Canada are called 1,000 microwatts per square centimeter of your body. Now understand this. They refer to that as power density. People need to understand what power is. Power is watts. And that means uh, you, you, people have used the 100-watt light bulb. Yeah. Well, they're using you and, and, and putting these watts through you because you're part of the circuit. Here, here, imagine this with Canada. Their exposure guidelines were 1,000 microwatts per square centimeter of your body. In the DEC phone study, which is a cordless phone, not a cell phone, not this big radiation device, at 0.1 of one microwatt, there were altered brain waves. Mm -hmm. That in itself is enough to cause problems. Uh, you know, who, who knows? Even you know, put put people on the on the on the wrong radio station. It's going to also alter other frequencies in your body as well. You cannot do this under any circumstances. Mm -hmm. Ready for and, the And here's the thing question? too, and to say this: 
Mark, uh, and the same thing too is it was the mechanisms mechanisms of interaction that were missing, and the mechanisms of action. Now, the mechanisms of action, interaction, linking these radio frequencies to adverse health effects is electrical. You're talking about an electromagnetic field that requires an electrical and a qualified electrical interpretation first. Yes. Ready for the second question from Lisa? Sure. My mother passed before mobile phones arrived in 1994. She had the very same health complaints I now see in myself. Dash, migraine type headache, head pain. Dash, skin rashes in the same locations. Dash, varicose or spider veins. Dash, chest, chest, I'm sorry, something's gone wrong with my screen here. Got pop-ups here from all the scheduled posts showing. Okay, I click them out. Chest pains, extreme tiredness, and lethargy, depression, anxiety. They had overhead power and telephone lines very near their home. Only owned very basic amounts of technology: a microwave oven, one old-style television a cordless phone, a, a video player. I, am, I, too, am very close to overhead power, telephone, and broadband cables, and so much more. Yet I see in me an increase in ovarian and breast cysts. So there's no actual question to that. Well, he, than, he, here's the thing with her, and I'm, I'm glad she asks this, because yeah. here's here's the reality, you know, You've heard about this where they talk about, you know, dirty electricity and, uh, you know, are power lines dangerous? Single power lines are dangerous and extremely dangerous. And that's what I mean. You'll see power lines. Here, here think of an extension cord. And in, in that extension cord, you've got, you know, your, your hot wire, a neutral, and you've probably got a ground wire in there. EMFs, when they're in a cable, uh, uh, pardon me, the EMFs in a cable cancel each other out. When you've got single power lines, they are exceptionally dangerous. And uh, because even though it's 60 hertz or 50, psych- or 50 hertz, which is 50 electrical cycles a second, uh, these EMS can reach out quite a distance. And here's an example that happened here, and we've talked about this. A lineman was working on a dead power line, a dead single power line running parallel to a live one. It was 70 feet away or seven stories away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The electrical load on the live line was so big that the electromagnetic field induced the dead line. He made a mistake and it killed him immediately. You cannot play around with electricity. So if she was underneath these uh, power lines as well, yes, you're going to have those problems. It's It's not necessarily the other cables that can do this, but power lines, absolutely. The fact that you're talking about a deck phone, it's the same idea. It was wireless. And here, here's mm-hmm. the bottom line with the symptoms. The exposure code actually says this, and, and these are the same guidelines used around the world. Unintentional stimulation of tissue is to be avoided. Experimental studies show it can lead to nerve and muscle depolarization, which is triggering nerves and muscles. So you think about the equivalent of you know, opening your garage door with a garage door opener where you hit your clicker and uh, all of a sudden your garage door opens. Well, imagine this electromagnetic trigger that actually triggers the nerves in your body or the muscles in your body and makes you spasm or whatever. Now, Professor Goldberg expanded on that so importantly for me with this. Your nervous, hormonal, and immune systems work intricately together. And when one is, one is affected, the others are profoundly affected as well. So you've got to understand this, Lisa. You've got a compromised nervous, hormonal, and immune system systems with this exposure to these EMFs. On top of that, you're inducing electrical current into you, which is changing the cellular voltages in your body, and that's using Ohm's law. Volts equals amps times resistance. When you induce currents even a little bit, you're increasing cellular voltages. And unbeknownst to me before this, I didn't realize that 0.4 and 
0.2.4 microvolts, which is 0.4 millionths of a volt increase, uh, changes white blood cells and changes mood. You think and of these very delicate parts of your body. Go ahead. Would Lisa have second generation effects from being conceived in her mother's toxic environment? Here, here's something that was very interesting, too, with that, too, and I, and I want to finish with this, too, that also this. When I cross-examined Fortis BC experts, I went after the electrical engineer, and I said, what happens when you mix two frequencies? He said, you get four resultant frequencies. And the bottom line with that is it means you're taking these frequencies with Lisa's frequencies in her body, and this is changing the frequencies in her body and how she functions as a whole. And so that's got to be taken into consideration, too. Never mind the high-speed vibrations just literally ripping her apart as well. But here's the bottom line, and Dr. Lynch actually talked about this. It was, you know, he, he attended the conference in, uh, in, in, in California, and, he, you know, invaluable information for him to see that, you know, we are electrically substantiating that reporting. But he actually made this comment, and I didn't ask him about this. New generations are showing mutation that the older generations don't have. You've got to remember this. Dr. John Orr radiated chicken eggs for 21 days. Or pardon me, for 21 days because they hatch in 21 days. So he radiated chicken eggs for four hours a day at 900 megahertz, which is the same as a cell phone. Um, women or girls are born with all the eggs they will use throughout their life. Mm-hmm. 21 days, uh, Dr. Orr, with, with Dr. Orr's experiment, the chicks were mutated. Mm-hmm. So that's what's going on with this, too. You are causing a mutation. You are causing unrealized changes in her as well. And this is why this has got to stop. And that's the importance of her, you know, taking that letter from the Integrative Health Forum uh, to their medical professionals. Because once they understand that, you know, that causal information, causal evidence, biological plausibility, those mechanisms have been found and reported and lectured for education credits required for ongoing medical licensing, that language will change her doctor's opinion immediately. They will immediately uh, uh, be getting a hold of Sharon and finding out what the heck happened with this stuff because medical diagnosis has changed. So she has every right to be afraid of these issues, and yes, it can attribute to all the things that she talked about with her body and the rashes and all the above. And, and, and I don't want to scare the heck out of people, but here's, here's a reality for me that does, it will haunt me for as long as I live. I never thought I would take hundreds of calls from people and hundreds of calls from people. And I'm talking professionals. I'm talking doctors. I'm talking lawyers. I'm talking some high-profile people screaming for their lives. And to hear that some of them died already and some committed, even to hear that somebody's grandmother committed suicide. EMFs. It's just a horrific thing that's happened across the board. And people have to know this. You might like your cell phone. I don't use a cell phone. One, I'm not going to be insured. I'm not going to be insured. Uh, the only time I ever carry a cell phone with me, and this is if, uh, if it would depend on the work we're doing, a dead cell phone, they made a deal with, I, I guess, with manufacturers a long time ago that a dead cell phone will still call 911. So if I, if, I get, if I work someplace where you get into a lot of trouble and you have to dial 911, that's the only time I'd use a cell phone. Otherwise, you know what, yeah, I don't do that. I'm hardwired, hardwired mm-hmm. and ready to go. <laughs> okay, question number three from Lisa. Are you, Professor Curtis Bennett, and the IH team intending to write up proposed recommendations for, quote, safe, unquote, safety standards legislation? And was this done previously? Well, here's the thing with this. The EMFs are, are illegal as applied. You can't. You, the bottom line is you can't do this. And here, when you think about this, um, it, everybody's talked on a walkie-talkie or a little portable radio, and you talk to each other, and that is working on a specific frequency. Now, you think about this. Mother Earth, you know, generates generates its own electricity. You think about the Earth's magnetic field from underneath. The Earth is turning. You know, you create electricity with uh, three different things. You've got a magnetic field, you've got a conductor, and you've got to move the magnetic field, you've got to move the conductor. So you think of planet Earth, this beautiful place we live on, everything on it, including everybody on it, is a wireless device. 
We are a wireless device by creation, whatever you want to believe that to be. That's what we are. And the heartbeat of Mother Earth is 7.83 hertz, which is 7.83 electrical cycles per second. That is not compatible with 900 million cycles per second, 2.45 billion cycles per second. And when they talk about some 5G equipment, you know, I've heard it, some of that is going to be like a 71 billion cycles per second. We're going to kill the planet. And so you just can't do that across the board. You, you can't do it. It's illegal. You will undermine everything. There will be no more military. There will be no more food. There will be nothing. We will kill the planet. That's why all the laws are already in place. This never should have gotten, gotten away from us in the first place. We're not going to be changing anything. We're just actually enforcing laws as they are. And, and again, Diane, I can refer to you know, sustainable development as defined in the Auditor General Act of Canada. And here's what it is. That basically, we shall not impact future generations with what we do today. You know, the economy, environment, and all the above have to meet and do this properly. That's what, that was the purpose of all those codes and standards and what our forefathers gave their lives for and to, and to do all this. Not to all of a sudden have these guys and the new techies with, hey, this stuff is really innovative because it's killing them too. Make no mistake about it. Mm -hmm. and, and IEEE, and here's where this is important too. IEEE is the, uh, what, it, what is it? Is that the... Institute for Electrical and uh, Electrical and Electronics Engineers. It's the biggest technical standard group in the world. And you know that electrical engineers, listen, they're brilliant. Electronics engineers are brilliant, but they shouldn't overstep their areas of expertise because as electrical professionals, we don't put humans in an electromagnetic field. And we're actually ignorant to the issue because here's an example of Dr. Lynch. He actually said to me, he said, Curtis, do you know your body has voltages, capacitance, inductance, and frequencies? And I said, get the heck out of here. <laughs> and he said, you didn't know that. And I said, no. I said, if we can't use you for a conductor, I said, we don't talk about it. Right. So you just cannot do this. This is just uh, uh, against everything in the world. Against it's an, it's an assault on creation. It's an assault on every religion. It's an assault on every country. You can't do this. This will kill the whole entire planet. Are you talking 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, and is 5G up and running? 5G is not up and running as they as as everybody thinks it is, and unfortunately, you know that's that thing with that has gone on with people in the terror of 5G, thinking, oh my goodness, you know, this is all of a sudden 5G's here, and this is the end all to be all. First generation is is uh, illegal. You can't, you know, whether that's the deck phone part of that, like a cordless phone. I remember when a cordless phone first came out, because in days of old, you'd get you'd get a couple of long telephone cords, and that way, that was your, uh, uh, you'd carry that to the backyard with you. You'd take 100 feet of little wire with you, so you could still talk on the phone. I did that. And then all of a sudden, you've got a cord, you've, yeah, and then all of a sudden, you've got a cordless phone that had a, a small range, and then you've got these other devices that came forward. Any generation of these technologies where these EMFs are, are impacting you, listen, you can't do that. The only one I'd say that is safe is this, and that would be a remote control. And that's a remote mm -hmm. control for the television because have you ever done this before or heard this before from your parents or anything else like this where you stand in front of the TV when uh, the football game's on and they go, hey, get out of the way of the TV. You're blocking me from changing the channel or turning it up or doing whatever. So those... That, that remote control, this isn't going through you. Um, so, you know, other, otherwise, every part of it's dangerous. We're just not electrically compatible. And when, when you're saying we're not electrically compatible, you can't put your car battery in a flashlight. Doesn't fit. So you electrically electrically compatible is that simple. We all we have our own we have our own electricity. We have our own considerations, and that has to be paid attention to. Okay, I think that finishes Lisa's questions. And we've dealt with Mike. And what else have we got here? You've mentioned former Prime Minister Stephen Harper. Here's a good one. Please explain how frequencies are related to causation when people have their hearts go into sudden cardiac death with the nerves of their hearts electrically short-circuiting by the use of cell phones, wireless internet, and all our 
forced upon us, smart meters and everything else that's wireless. You know, that's actually a good question for this too because it mentions two important things. Exposure code like safety code 6, the same guidelines used around the world, the same science used by even the radiation industries, the radiation agencies, and they should have paid attention to this too. When safety code 6 actually said this, causation and biological plausibility is missing. Mm -hmm. Well, causation is, oops, you left out the grid. As soon as you incorporate the grid, you've got cause. Here's how the EMFs are hitting you. Biological plausibility was missing because the plastic head doesn't have any biology. As soon as you incorporate, here's the bioelectrical information associated with humans, you know, you've got biological plausibility. And I say this too when I, when I cross-examine Fortis BC's experts in, a, in, a, in this group called Exponent Inc. And Dr. William Bailey, you know, the neuroscience genius uh, for Exponent Inc. who just is a legend in his own mind you know, because he's gone to all these radiation agencies. He's been part of this and just polluted that with his absolute ignorance on the issue. When I cross-examined Fortis, B.C., I said to Dr. Bailey, I said, your background is in neurosciences. He said, yes, that's correct. I said, how many frequencies in your brain? He said, oh, there's lots. I said, uh, where's the bioelectrical information associated with a human organism in your risk assessment report? He said, it's not in there. He admitted they only considered the frequencies impinging upon the body. They did not consider the frequencies of the body, which is just ridiculous. You know, you cannot do that under any circumstances. So that's the causation part of it. Now, the second part of that question was what for him? Talk about how the sudden cardiac death is happening. Sudden well, cardiac death. The, well, here's why this yeah. is it. Here's why this is important. The reason we heard about sudden cardiac death was actually because of an article sent to us by a group uh, 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 that works with and, uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Mm -hmm. And Robert F. Kennedy Jr. talked about sudden cardiac death and, uh, you know, can it be caused by electromagnetic radiation? Well, I didn't know what it was until I, until I read it, but imagine this. The nerves of the, the, nerves of the heart are electrically short-circuiting. So you think about the, what's, you know, the insulator for these nerves is called a myelin sheath, and I'm, I can't talk over my areas of expertise, but here's what that, that uh, insulation over those nerves is called a myelin sheath. Mm -hmm. It covers those nerves so they don't touch each other. If they touch mm -hmm. each other, you're gonna have, an, you're gonna have a, effectively an electrical short circuit like you would if two wires touch each other. Uh, you'll hear, you know, that's when the breaker pops and you'll, go, uh-oh, reset the breaker, do whatever. Well, here's what's going on. When you're inducing these electrical currents into people and you're doing these high-speed vibrations, shaking the myelin sheath, inducing currents into it, and as well as shaking it, vibrating it, and ripping that sheath apart, it's going to bear the nerves and the nerves will short-circuit. The fact that Kennedy reported this, and it's killing 3,700 young people a year. Imagine this. Imagine the nerves of your heart electrically short-circuiting, and there is no resuscitation. If you're lucky enough to be in a hospital when this happened, I don't know if they could resuscitate you. But the bottom line is, you're dead. The fact that this is happening mm -hmm. to young people, uh, to me, I would think that a younger person, you know, they're still growing and developing, and uh, so therefore, you know, older, older people might be tougher. But make no mistake about this. It's going to kill more people. It's going to kill more people, and it's going to short-circuit more hearts. There's no doubt about it. These EMFs go through you. They're going through your body. They're going through your heart, and uh, they're vibrating you at high speeds. And um, Imagine, again, taking you, when you want to think about this, you take that battery I talked about, a double-A battery with a plus and minus on it. Flip that end for end billions of times per second. So imagine taking a baby, a car, I don't care what it is, and you flip it end for end billions of times a second, it's going to melt, it's going to come apart. There's no doubt about it. And so that's what's happening with this. So more people are going to have these problems. And then you think about, you know, your nerves run every part of your body. What other nerve is it going to short out? What other mm -hmm. part of your body is going to be compromised as a result of this? These have to be stopped. The idea that 3,700 young people a year are dying now as a result of this is absolutely unacceptable. Everything's 
going to fail from being able to walk to stand up. This will kill the whole. Well, you imagine this: your nerves run any, everything. So you're absolutely right. Every mm-hmm. function of your body that your nerves are that electrical system. And mm-hmm. so if those nerves fail, you know you're right. You're going to have any part of your body fail to function, and uh, and and. You know, you're effectively putting people in a microwave oven. You want to keep this simple. You know, I know it sounds grotesque, but when people talk about how safe this is and you want to get lippy about it, I, I ask them, how long can you put a baby in a microwave for? Zero. Curtis, and I said, how long can you put a baby in a microwave for? How long can you put grandma in a microwave for? Yeah. You can't do that. You can't do that under any circumstances. Uh, we wouldn't do that. You know, microwaves, quite frankly... Uh, you know, I don't even use them because, um, you know, they're not heating food as per normal. They're mm-hmm. radiating it. Yeah. And, and even Dr. Lynch, now, Dr. Lynch years ago said this to me that um, bins, you, you imagine when they ship in these big containers of vegetables and everything else from different countries. And he was talking about the fact that the products were altered. These are vegetables. These are all of these things. And he had a friend who was actually would return products sent to him because they had X-rayed at the border, X-rayed at the border, and changed it. So he mm-hmm. sent it back, and he said, "You irradiated my product. It's not going to work." So I thought, "Holy mackerel! How are they doing that?" And then you think about them mm-hmm. X-raying a great big cargo ship in the bin full of bananas, bin full of this, bin full of this, and you're microwaving it, and microwaving it means you're causing these high-speed polari- uh, polarizing we're talking about, where you're just shaking something so violently that it's heating things. And by the way, microwaves do not heat from the inside out. They are cooking you, they are cooking you from the outside in. Uh, yeah. Another question here. What is unique about the contribution of the Integrative Health Forum, IHF Global, and Associates to electrically substantiate Dr. Martin Paul and all the other wonderful EMF research scientists, and yet it's critically different from all the other scientists' work? That's a, that's a very good question. Here's the importance for everybody with this, because... Here, here's what's important when you put when you pass this through jurisdictions. And, and again, I want to say this, you know, with all that required humility, you know, um, Sharon Weinstein, as a matter of fact, had to had to actually call me and say, Curtis, you have to change your credentials. And I said, Sharon, I got enough going on. She said, you better look this up. And I look it up and I said, I'm a professor. And she said, without the pay. Yeah. Here again is an important title. I didn't realize I was lecturing accredited medical education programs. I just thought I was lecturing programs. I didn't realize the significance of them, but here's why this is important with this, again, the fact that medical professionals require ongoing education for ongoing medical licensing. It's the way it is. So here's why this was so important. September 14th of 2010, uh, causation and biological plausibility and those errors we talked about in Safety Code 6 were reported through our jurisdictions, through the, uh, the BC, our municipal government here, our provincial government of British Columbia, and our government of Canada through Health Canada. Uh, October 28th, 2010, um, I provided expert witness at the request of Canadian Parliament specific to those mechanisms and that, and that uh, evidence being found, and that was at their request. I actually asked them, I said, can you make me testify? And they said, do we have to? And they said, no. And it's important with this, too, because Andrew Goldsworthy was part of that, too, Dr. Goldsworthy, and his work on bees and pollinators and all the above. You know, imagine this. I'm electrically substantiating him. That's what that was all about. Now, after October 28th, as soon as I finished testifying for the committee, I contacted Sharon Weinstein, and I said, Sharon, we got problems. I said, here's what's going on with this. Uh, I, said, uh, I said, listen, they've left this information out of the code and all the above. We have to have a medical education program associated with this. And here's how wonderful and powerful they are. She said, prove it. So you have to prove this. You just can't say, Sharon, please put on a medical program because I think it's a good idea. This is a very serious insured process and they just can't mess around. So January 7th and 8th, the causal evidence and biological plausibility and mechanisms was lectured for education credits at the University of Central Florida. 
Now, that doesn't mean it's only applicable to the University of Central F Florida. That's the environment that it, that it had to be lectured in. You know, Sharon's group facilitates that where we're going to have a program. Here's where it's going to be. Dr. Lynch was an honorary faculty member at the University of Central Florida. But the program at that time, when we lectured that program, the state of Florida wanted it approved for all health disciplines because it was lectured in the state of Florida. But the bottom line is it was applicable to all health professionals in the United States and Canada. So imagine this. Medical professionals require ongoing licensing. So, and they need those education credits to go back to school and get some additional work. And even if they don't take this course, you know, that's up to them if they're going to take this course, but I would just highly recommend it. The bottom line is, once it's lectured for education credits, it's no longer a debate. This is what I mean. This is the highest accredit. The, the, it is the final. This is the highest accreditation and the highest medical standard there is. And it's recognized now in, in two countries, two countries, to millions of health professionals. And that's going to grow internationally as they develop these new programs. That sets the standard that your everybody's health professionals are looking for. They don't want to hear, you know, hey, I've got an opinion on this, or I've got an opinion on this, because the bottom line with these EMFs is this. These EMFs have changed the scope of medical diagnosis. And I, I would lecture this in a heartbeat saying this, and, I, and I've actually said this. You can not leave out electromagnetic field exposure in medical diagnosis. It should be just part of your questioning right off the bat when you're dealing with your patient. What's your EMF environment? What are you doing? What are you using? Um, so that's the importance of, of uh, the IHF and associates. They don't sell anything. You can imagine this. When we lecture, we have to submit that lecture, and that lecture has to be approved by a committee. And then after that, you've got moderators that are keeping an eye on that. And let me tell you, Sharon Weinstein has been the moderator for those things. And, you know, you want to see how dynamite comes in a small package. If you step out of line with what you're lecturing and what you're doing, she will call you on it. Mm -hmm. Can't do that. I can't, I, can't, I can't have a little flashing light or little tattoos that say, here, contact Curtis at thermalguy.com or whatever the case may be. You can't advertise. You can't have conflicts of interest. This is accredited medical education. There's no higher standard. And this is why this is important to every country in the world. This is what medical professionals are looking for. I feel so horrible for, for, for Dr. Paul, Ole Johansson. Imagine this. I got Dr. Goldberg to read the bioinitiative report. And uh, it's 1,500 pages. And here is all this peer-reviewed science from all of these people, the Deborah Davis, uh, everybody that's done a report on these things. And he said, at the end of it, he said, you are electrically substantiating them. And that just means we're not competing with them. We are qualifying them where before they were being dismissed by people that would say, prove it. Prove the mechanisms instead of, and, and here again, they shouldn't have to get into a peeing contest about a plastic header doing those types of things. The fact that these these professionals were dismissed and minimized, and Ole Johansson, uh, you know, was part of the Karolinska Institute, which is where the Nobel Prize is handed out, and rumor has it now that he doesn't even get to work there anymore because he has continued on about these EMF issues, and it's just horrific uh, that they've minimized him and, and, and been so disrespectful respectful to Martin Paul and uh, you know it doesn't matter which professional it is you go down the line uh, even even Dr. Lynch as he went to this EMF conference we are electrically substantiating the reporting of those professionals at the conference but we are not uh, uh, allowing this to be that conference also wants this they want to minimize uh, there are some people in the conference that want to minimize radiation not stop it they don't want to stop Wi-Fi in schools because they said, hey, this is here to stay. Let's just keep the power density down. There is no acceptable exposure, and those ones don't know what they're talking about. So we are qualifying those professionals, and uh, we need to work with those professionals. They need to attend these programs so that they can have that extra science they need, and it is accredited medical education, like I said, uh, the best standard in the world. And then guess what? We're already set up to train um, 
medical professionals because you can't see what this radiation does to you, as horrible as it is, and I'm not looking forward to that whatsoever. But part of our job, too, is in this program is we do a practicum on, uh, a practicum on teaching medical professionals how to see this, see these damages, to see inflammation um, uh, using non-invasive radiology. And, and, and here's another thing I want to say, is, say as well, which is really important. People need to understand this, and I never realized this because it drove me crazy. Uh, with injury or infection, there's an inflammatory response, which is heat. There's a hundred percent of the time. So mm -hmm. here, even a lawyer friend of mine once. Here's an example. He said, "I got into a car accident, and somebody just hit the back of my bumper." And and uh, he said, "You know, I can get you some money for that." And I said, "What do you mean you can get me some money for that?" I said, "I'm not hurt." He said, "It doesn't matter." He said, "I can get you five grand." And I said, "How the heck do you do that?" And then he said, "Well." Well, all they do is they go, the lawyers go back and forth and they say to, with the insurance company and say, listen, we're going to sue you and we're going to settle on some type of an amount. So let's settle for a little bit ahead of time and save money. Medicine is blind, was blind to inflammation. Imagine these professionals when you go in to see your doctor and you're hurting and they can't see this inflammation or isolate it. Uh, they can't see these cancers and isolate it uh, doing these things. The Integrative Health Forum and Associates is the most advanced medical education program in the world because we show the early detections of cancers. We isolate inflammation uh, to a pixel so that you can see the source of this. You know, I'd use acute pancreatitis as an example. Killed Michael Landon, killed Patrick Swayze, uh, who's the, who, who, who Steve Jobs of, uh, of uh, Apple. He died from acute pancreatitis too, or pancreatic cancer. You know, you've heard of football players and uh, athletes where this, you know, concussions are, are costing them billions of dollars, and never mind that, uh, the loss of their lives and livelihood and the loss of their family at the Integrative Health Forum and their education. You know, we don't sell equipment. We don't sell anything. They sell this education and train and do all the above we're showing them how you can isolate that brain injury, uh, eye problems, sinus problems. It doesn't matter what it is, even breast cancer issues where, you know, uh, it's just not comparable to anything in the world. Uh, I can't imagine, you know, it drove me crazy to even think about poor doctors. I said, you're blind to temperature. And he said, well, we don't like to think about it that way. And I said, if I was a blind electrician, my name would be Voltage Tester. Because you're just going to get yourself hurt someplace. So the importance of this program is this. And not only do they see, can they see inflammation, you can see lack of because a stroke is colder. You know, lack of circulation is colder and you can isolate those issues. And then also the medical education, uh, the Integrative Health Forum deals with the body at that energy level. So they talk about, you know, uh, here are the benefits of specifically designed magnetic fields. Here's the dangers of electromagnetic fields. And it's very interactive as well. And if we're lucky, now I've asked Sharon this. I said, would you consider opening up the program to other uh, uh, sciences and other, other, other different types of uh, sciences and different professionals and even the public? She said, we can discuss it, but it's going to be this. They're not going to, you, this isn't a, a thing where you're going to sit and debate me. You're not going to sit there and say, Curtis, we disagree with you. That ship has sailed. You know, this is an education for health professionals. The fact that any of us get to sit in that classroom and participate, I can tell you, is a humbling uh, experience because for me alone, my, my, even my own company said, after you lecture, Curtis, do you leave and go and visit and, you know, tour around or do those things? No, I am a student. I am a student. It, how unique a program for these health professionals and I to investigate each other, and now we are each other's professors as well as each other's students. I don't miss any part of Dr. Goldberg's program, Dr. Lynch's program, Sharon's program, uh, any any local uh, uh, professionals that they've got there on nutrition and other energy issues, or uh, Professor Beauvais at the time. Uh, it's just so incredible. Uh, to even participate in this and have that visual as well and very, very interactive. So they are going to consider opening this up to the public, opening up to students. Uh, the whole part is to change the world with this. And keep this in mind as well with the significance of this. 
what do all what does all academia in the entire world and all the members of the United Nations, every country in the world have in common? Lack of they're being all able blind, to see temperature. They're all blind to temperature. They're all blind to temperature. As engineering professionals, we calculate it. It, it would bore people to tears to hear how we calculate electron flow through a wall to see how much energy uh, uh, that building's using, and here's how we're going to stop that energy loss or doing those things versus here's what it looks like. So imagine this when they talk about climate change. The United Nations has uh, put, put together seven or $800 billion uh, to deal with climate change and the cause of man-made global warming. It's not exactly what Al Gore thinks it is, which is heat trapping gases because, uh, you know, you, it's pretty tough to trap heat. And I say this with all the required humility because I was asked to co-present with Al Gore uh, at a major venue at GM Place, and I had to turn him down because, uh, one, you know, his science isn't, isn't accurate, and two, you know, Premier Gordon Campbell would have introduced us, and Premier Gordon Campbell would just pees his pants anytime he's going to think or, or see me because uh, he's a piece of crap. He edited that public fire inquiry where, you know, California didn't have to burn like that. So that's another issue with the with the health forum is training firefighters so that that gas leak we heard about, or or training them and giving them sight through that smoke where otherwise they're fighting these fires blind. All those people that died in California, that didn't have to happen. That was absolutely 100% avoidable. Afterwards, you know, the, it, it burned, the forest burned so hot and so deep in the ground. Then there were mudslides afterwards that washed babies away and killed, you know, 20 people last year uh, in California alone. To, to hear about firefighters calling a May Day and a watering drop on their own vehicle because the vehicle's combusting because they're caught in this fire haunts me. It's not supposed to be happening. So it is just the most advanced education in the world, a privilege to be associated with. And again, this is about giving professionals out there sight of this. When engineers and other science professionals get to see beyond their visible spectrum, it is just humbling. And to be able to show that to a patient, we would image people in clinical environments in front of doctor, with Dr. Lynch, in front of his patients, and it was amazing to see his patients go, I told you I wasn't crazy. There it is right there. You can see it. Mm-hmm. So this is just a win-win for everybody, and it's about, at the end of the day, it's about saving money. Saving money, mm-hmm. saving lives, saving environment. Uh, babies can't talk. You know, they can't, they, you know, when, they're ta- when they're talking and making noise or doing those things, you know, they can't talk about where they're hurting or what's going on. And imagine being, being able to isolate that for them and actually treat them uh, using non-invasive technology. And I want to say this, too, because there's an election going on. This was given to the Liberal Party and uh, Prime Minister Trudeau and our Member of Parliament, Stephen Fear four years ago. And uh, the ability to, to use this technology as is and for our government to go forward with this. Well, Stephen Fear is a, a Navy pilot. You know, he's just, or pardon me, he's an Air Force pilot and just, quite frankly, a legend in his own mind because this despicable excuse for an elected uh, official did not pass on this information to uh, uh, to governments and to these different agencies. Neither did, neither did Prime Minister Trudeau. They didn't do any part of this. And here's what happened in Ontario and Mississauga. Uh, an 11-year-old girl goes into an emergency room with her, with her parents, and they, she's just got a flu, so they just send her home. The next day she goes back, and she's got a flu again. They just send her home. The third day she comes back in there, and the mother hears the hospital say she's dead. And they actually had to revive her, and it, it turns out that you know, they had to re- she lost an arm and a leg. Uh, because of a very aggressive infection. And uh, imagine this now, the costs, because now you're going to have a hospital. These poor medical professionals, uh, you know, they could have seen that in five minutes. They could have seen that immediately. Instead, now the hospital is liable. Uh, you're going to have medical professionals liable. The cost to the health system, never mind the cost to this poor little peanut uh, losing an arm and a leg and her family when it didn't have to happen. Is the Integrative Health Forum and and the global um, program the only one that is inclusive of all lives as compared to the Bioinitiative Report and all the other summits out there now? 
It is the only one, and even actually, the, the they just had an EMF, some type of an EMF conference in California where they said, you know, that's the first accredited medical education program on EMFs, and that's just not the truth. The first one happened with the Integrative Health Forum in 2011, and January 7th and 8th. Uh, they're the best in the world, without exception. There, is, there is no. There is no parallel by by any of these, but w that's the purpose of this too: is to bring them into this fold so that they can do this in their clinical environments and to work with them, educate them, and all the above. Like I said, it is about education. You know, you when you when you go to school, you don't you're you're you've got your instructors, you know, instructing you and teaching you, and this is what this program's all about. And I'm just humbled uh, to be a part of that. Will all the medical clinics be safe to go into? Will there be free of wireless frequencies? Well, they'll, 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 this is the whole part. They'll have to be because, you know, and, and this is why it's important for people to understand this too. It took me another, you know, I would say 12 years, you know. Uh, it took me six years before Sharon invited me to submit a lecture for uh, for education credits and, and for the, the fact that it might be lectured at that level. And that was in 2006 when I lectured the first program related to this. So now when you bring it up to these levels now, it took me another 12 years to earn a title where I am called the chief of an international science advisory board of 14,301 uh, members, which are licensed health and consulting professionals. And when I talk about me being a chief, I'm just talking about I lead our team on that issue here. I'm not a, I'm not singular by any means, but my background is, uh, you know, I've got an, I've got a, an electrical background, a recognized credential across Canada. I've got a building engineering background. I've been a thermal, I've been a radiation consultant for 40 years, and our team is the best in the world, and now I'm a professor lecturing accredited medical education. So I am the chief of their International Science Advisory Board because thermal radiation is the natural frequencies and vibrations of all matter, everything in existence above absolute zero, which means if it was minus 496 degrees Fahrenheit outside, which is very cold, we wouldn't live in it, quite frankly, but that's called the absolute zero. They say that electrons and everything else, they're just sitting there and hibernating, not doing anything. As soon as they warm up just even a little bit, you get these natural frequencies and vibrations that can be seen. So that's the basis of every science and why um, I'm just there to keep uh, processes cost uh, so they're not cost prohibitive. So here's an example for the Department of Fisheries and Oceans. When they said, we want you to bring our, your team because we want you to image, we want to talk about imaging groundwater from the air. It's considered nature's hidden treasure. Well, I didn't take a team with me because I don't need one at that time. Um, what I did is I went on my own because it's just uh, more cost effective because all I'm going to do is look at this and find out exactly what they need and we'll develop an imaging application to achieve that and then work with our team to just make it happen. So I didn't even realize this is how cool our work is with this too, that uh, you know to be retained for the aerial imaging of groundwater, which is considered nature's hidden treasure. This is where they put uh, hatcheries. This is where you've got groundwater upwellings within river systems as opposed to people drilling all the time. That you can actually, you know, do this using a non-invasive uh, radiology to isolate problems. Uh, we did thermal barriers for fish spawning and uh, showed them where they can plant some trees or plant this to stop that uh, thermal barrier so you're protecting the fish. And another reason why we have to stop this stuff because everything in the world is temperature sensitive. Make no mistake about it. So as we heat up the planet or doing things, we will kill everything on the planet, and that's going to include all food sources and everything there is. Yeah. People are asking about will they have to uh, have deep pockets to retain a lawyer to get a settlement I'm, I'm for glad their injuries? I'm, I'm actually glad they asked that, too, and the answer is no, because I the bottom have. line is is that... The, the, well, the bottom line is is that uh, this is another reason we did it this way is that here's an example of this, and there's a dairy farmer in uh, uh, a dairy farmer and a very good man, and he's actually he's got 54 properties in Tennessee, um, him and him and his wife, and on those 54 properties, I think they've already had six people die from EMF exposure. Mm -hmm. 
contacted me. He said, can you come out and uh, survey the property and do whatever and find out where this is coming from and isolate it and all the above? And I said, don't hurry on that. I said, what we would do is we want to bring in your, your state radiology team at their dollar so it's not costing you money. Unfortunately, you know, he didn't do that. And so he hired uh, Dave Stetzer. Uh, with Stetzer Filters, and he hired Dr. Sam Milham, and they came in and for a week and did a report, cost them $50,000. The report really substantiated that, hey, yeah, you've got EMFs here, but they didn't stop anything. Then after that, he, he said, I'm going to hire lawyers, and I said, don't hire lawyers. I said, because you're going to have to teach them about electricity on your dollar. And the bottom line at the end of it, it you know, is he spent over $300,000 and uh, the lawyers just told him, they said, listen, your case is going to be dismissed unless you can get a causal expert uh, to, to qualify this. And they said, should we qualify that Curtis Bennett as an expert? And, you know, by then it was already too late for Ken and, and all the above. You know, he'd already, he'd already made such a mess of things and uh, that's too bad. And here's that other thing too is that I've actually had high-ranking attorneys, and I'm, I can't mention who they are or what, all the above, where they contacted us and said, we want to retain you at any cost whatsoever. It doesn't matter how many millions it is. They wanted okay. us to qualify how they were being targeted and how they were being hurt and how how doctors and medical teams and, and dental teams were breaking into their building at night and doing surgeries on them. And, and their perception of that was because I said, I said, are you listening to yourself? And they said, you don't believe me. And I said, they said, I can feel them under my skin. And I said, you can feel this because it's an electromotive force and it is going into your skin. It is going into your body and doing those things. So here's what we wanted to do to keep it simple because, one, to give this to lawyers, we didn't want lawyers to be able to capitalize on this because lawyers would typically say, okay, listen, we'll take this and uh, we want this bigger percentage of this, but uh, this way, you know, causation has been found and reported. This has all been substantiated, and this is what lawyers needed in the language they need to carry forward to represent everybody. But you've got to understand this. You've got to represent the causal evidence, not hypersensitivity. You can't twist that language. And, and again, with people, they go, you know, you're really bossy, Curtis. You know, you, I said, I am only speaking within my area of expertise, and other professionals can expand on that in their capacity. But uh, it is the causal evidence that was missing from the beginning of time. Declassified military documents said, we're missing the mechanisms of interaction and the mechanisms of action and we don't understand non-thermal effects and all the above. Well, here's the bottom line is mechanism of interaction is electrical. So that has to be qualified by an, a qualified electrical professional. And then a mechanism of action would be this. Oh, this is hitting buildings. Well, that's going to affect an engineer. That's going to affect the building trades. Oh, this mechanism of action is it's hitting crops, agriculture, different sciences. So this is just giving them everything they need. And again, there is no such thing as non-thermal. It is all thermal, and it can all be seen. It was just unfortunately misrepresented by uh, a lot of sleazy people. Let's do one more issue. Urban heat island generators and emissivity. That's a good one because here's the bottom line with this. You know, people might have heard of urban heat islands, and 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 here's why this is important. When they talk about global warming, um, I've got like I said, I've got a building engineering background as well, and so here's an example in in our area here. People would never believe this because of the deregulation of the uh, uh, building industry, where now it's a hobby. You can watch a television show and people are flipping properties and just doing whatever they want and thinking, isn't this pretty, instead of a building is an engineered product, just like an elevator. You get an elevator that's designed for you know 1,000 pounds or 3,000 pounds, listen, that is calculated. And uh, it's going to be over-designed a little bit to make sure it can accommodate that load. And I want to use, I want to use the space shuttle that blew up as an example. Mm-hmm. When that space shuttle blew up and the teacher was on board, you know, they were trying to the U.S. and there was a big space race going on. The U.S. wanted to show how simple 
it was that anybody could go to space and all the above. So, you know, unfortunately, Ronald Reagan was in office. George Bush, a, a senior, was the vice president. And uh, here on that day when the space shuttle was going to take off, it was a 21-degree morning in, in Florida, and that's cold. And they actually showed icicles on the rocket. Well, the lead engineer said Fahrenheit. this. 21 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. The lead engineer said, they said, listen, we, uh, we want to launch. And the lead engineer said this. It has to be 53 degrees to launch. It has okay. to be 53 degrees. They made a political decision, and they over, they went over him, and they decided to launch. Well, guess what? The gaskets on the booster, on the booster rocket shrunk because yeah. everything is mo- everything is moving. Everything is moving. When people don't understand this, your building is moving. It's expanding, contracting all day long. Uh, even if you might have seen this, have you ever gone by a place and you've seen the siding looks like an accordion and all of a sudden it's squished up? That's because they've tacked down the, the siding instead of there's little slots where you can just tack the siding on and the siding will move as the building expands and warms up and contracts and, and does this. So the rocket booster gasket shrunk. And so that just meant failure and uh, unfortunately the, the space shuttle blew up. And that poor engineer went crazy. I think he had a nervous breakdown after that. But the bottom line is, you know, you've got something designed for 50 degree, 53 degrees, and that's when he's saying it needs to take off. Uh, them doing that at 21 degrees Fahrenheit was just too much of a, a problem. So here's why I say this, too, is that here's buildings in the Okanagan, as an example. They're designed for minus 20 degrees Celsius. I think it's minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit to simulate the coldest time of the year plus 95 degrees Fahrenheit or plus 35 degrees Celsius to simulate the hottest time of the year. So we will design that building, insulate that building, and design the energy systems to accommodate that weather. <clears throat> and that's actually in building code, and it's called regional, it's called climatic data. Climatic data, they've got it in build and code all the way across Canada in different regions. You can imagine this. They have different criteria if you live in the north versus the south and all the above. So, And then what the code also says with this is it says, it refers you to the appendix of the code, and it says, watch out for solar radiation. The reason it says that is this. Everybody has leaned against a hot car or, uh, or, 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 or sat on a roof, and you burn your butt. Mm-hmm. It's because solar EMFs have caused, caused excitation of that very absorbent material on the exterior of buildings, and it causes them to generate heat. You, you, have you ever seen pictures of whitewashed buildings in Europe? And it, it looks kind of beautiful, but if they're all white and reflective and all the above. The reason they do that is they reflect solar EMFs. They do not, that energy does not get absorbed where it's going to generate heat. So buildings are urban heat generators before they become urban heat islands. And here's an example of this. The United Nations members are worried about a, a, a three degree, what is it, a 3.6 degree rise in atmospheric temperature or a two degree rise in atmospheric temperature is, is said to be globally catastrophic by scientists. So that means the same as this. If you turn on the thermostat in your building and say, okay, I want to turn this up to, so it heats up you know, 3.6 degrees, that's exactly this. Well, we've doc, we imaged buildings in seven provinces in 26 states on urban heat generation and all the above, and buildings, the exteriors with no shade and this absorbent exterior uh, finishes on the outside of the building. Buildings were generating heat close to boiling temperature. Even in the Okanagan, we had uh, one building because the owner wanted it gray, wanted a dark gray building. Well, guess what? Dark gray building was actually 92 degrees Celsius, and 100 is boiling. It was 204 degrees Fahrenheit on the outside. It's it's insulated for 95. But with the heat the actually emiss- heats up because it's very absorbent. When they talk about emissivity, emissivity is the ability to emit and absorb this energy, and emissivity goes from zero to one. So if we would be imaging uh, 
uh, boilers or something in a in a refinery and something that's polished, we would get, we would find out the emissivity, do whatever tests needed to be done, so we could accurately measure uh, the temperature of the skin of that vessel uh, to troubleshoot it for engineers with buildings because they're very absorbent and uh, a high emissivity. The, the 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 heat that they're generating is off the charts, and people have to think about this. You know what air conditioning is. Refrigeration. Air, air, well, air conditioning is in fact refrigeration. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a very cool it's a very cool trade name like a oh air conditioning. Well, isn't that nice? Yeah. Air conditioning. It is in fact refrigeration, and I say that because um, I, I co-owned a flower franchise and uh, changed the flower industry forever. But when the guys were over uh, looking at a building with me, as soon as he pulled off the cover, I said, "That's refrigeration." Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You didn't know that. You didn't know that. They said no. <laughs> I said, "Why the hell would we have uh, refrigeration and heating in the same in the same environment?" And so we've actually uh, uh, produced time lapse infrared videos from inside the building and outside the building. It is so graphic to see these buildings heat up. And the bottom line is, this is heating the atmosphere and changing weather. Weather is the basic interaction of cold and warm air with water vapor. And here's the bottom line with this. The IHF as well is going to help the world do this. Uh, It's going to help every country and every province meet their emissions mandate and get rid of that air conditioning load by creating millions of jobs. Unfortunately, we just haven't got that past our our prime minister. You know, he's using the fact that, uh, you know, it's it's his duty uh, to represent job creation in Canada, but that's only if he likes who's uh, trying to create those jobs. Uh, we gave our we gave our government uh, information that would create millions of tax-paying jobs immediately, reduce this uh, energy load across the world, and save on burning coal, save on power generation without without uh, touching the generation station. Even this, and I want to share this with the with people because you've heard of. Um, people, you know, when you hear about babies, it, it, it just breaks my heart when you hear about a baby or a pet or a child left in a car yeah. on a hot day and they die. Yeah. That's 100% avoidable. Actually, mm-hmm. we've actually got, got a design thing going on with, uh, and we're going we're gonna to deal with auto manufacturers on this, but uh, the bottom line is it's, a, it's 100% avoidable. And uh, none of these kids, none of these kids, or none of these pets had to die like that. Um, and it would also lower the emissions of the vehicle immediately and help them meet those standards without, without touching the engine. Quite frankly. And do you think the radio frequency vibrations are affecting the memories of the drivers? Well, isn't that something scary to think about? You know, the the bottom line is, is you can actually att- here here again. I, I want to be careful with this because, but the bottom line is this. I think there's been 39,000. That's probably gone up, but there's been 39,000 shootings in the United States at schools between 1999 and in 2017, and uh, these are gun deaths related to this. When you mix these frequencies, you're changing the frequencies in their brain, and they're not on the same radio station that you or I would be on, and who knows what they're hearing, who knows what they're seeing, let alone this, and I, and I, and I challenge other professionals listening to this to think about this. Here's an example with a, a lady named Holly. And Holly's in California, and Holly would uh, keep talking about the EMF issue. She'd try to hide in a hotel. She'd try to hide places like this. But I actually had several calls like this where Holly called, uh, uh, and she would say, Curtis, you know, they're stalking me. I can tell that they're stalking me, that, you know, here they're here. Here's what they're trying to do, whatever. Here's what happened to Holly. I told her, be careful how you talk. You're going to get incarcerated because they're going to think you're crazy. Well, guess what? Uh, Holly ends up... uh, uh, getting incarcerated, uh, a danger to herself because she's hiding out in a hotel trying to be safe. And uh, she phones the police and she said, they're trying to uh, uh, put me on a, on a voyeurism website. And they've drilled a hole in the side of my building in the, in the hotel and they're trying to put me on a voyeurism website. And I, and I said right away, I said, the police showed up and she said, yes. And I said, there was no hole in the building. And she said, No. I said, and so they incarcerated you because they thought you were crazy. And she said, yes. But think about this for real. Mm-hmm. Is, there a, is there a chance, and here's the reality, 
is there a chance in a hotel that in here they got Wi-Fi, they've got Wi-Fi in this hotel, is there a chance that somebody in a room is looking at a voyeurism website or pornography or something to that effect? And this is crashing through her electrically because she's in that electrical circuit. So how does your body interpret that? Well, she interpreted that somebody was trying to see her or take pictures of her or doing those types of things. So you think about all the different things that people can possibly look at and what does that electrical information do crashing through our very electrical body, you know, be it the, uh, the Bible. Uh, how, do, how does a fetus interpret uh, an abortion video? Um, I mean, it's just horrible to think about because um, computers use binary code. O's and ones and O's and ones. It doesn't matter whether it's the Bible. It doesn't matter whether it's pornography. It's O's and ones. So that information crashing through us brings a whole other issue to this, where um, you know it's causing problems with people and uh, and making them more violent, um, making them crazier, plus inducing that electrical current into them and 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 uh, increasing that cellular voltage and changing mood. You know, you've got, there's no excuse for the violence that goes on nowadays. It's just horrific. And you, can you attribute it to these EMFs? Of course you can. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think we've done enough for tonight. Had a brain drain and a half. Oh, you've been wonderful to us. Thank you so much. Oh, listen, it's it, it just very important. It's very important for everybody to expand on this. And, Diana, I can't thank you enough as well. You know, you, you're you just an important part of this team, and you've really stepped up. Uh, and, you know, all, all you're doing on a shoestring budget without the shoes, and uh, you're working so hard for so many to do this stuff. So people that are listening to this, you know, you need to expand on this in your capacity, but don't ignore it. Um, even if people have said, you know, we don't like that Curtis, well, wah, wah, get over it. You know, nobody likes me. Unless, uh, and and here, here, here I can tell you this. I've actually gone to do work where people had to be removed because they said, you brought him here, you brought him. <laughs> and they were so angry that I was there that they said, You're, he's going to make a mess for me, he's going to do this. And they had to remove them from the building uh, to let to let us do our job, and then three weeks later they called me up and they said, "Do you remember me?" And I said, "Of course I do." And they said, "I want to retain you." <laughs> and as soon as they retained us, we went to look at a building for them, and that guy did the same thing. He all of a sudden went ballistic, and he said, "You're trying to do this." And she said, "I hated him too." She said, "You know, it, it is what it is. So a job's not popular, but science professionals have a duty to do their job. Professionals have a duty to do their job, and that's just that simple for me." Uh, there's, there are no compromises of this, or guess what? I can tell you this: Sharon Weinstein would would kick my butt to the curb immediately if I didn't do my job and uh, without compromises. She would just say, "Curtis, you're finished. That's it." And and that's not that's not happening. You know, I set out I set out on this journey, and I can tell you this to to make it personal for people. Um, my father passed away in 2000, and um, prior to him passing away, one it was so humbling to be able to carry him. Um, before he passed away, but to look at him in this table full of pills, and I said, what is that fixing? And he said, nothing. You know, this is treating the symptoms of my leukemia. This is treating my diabetes. Uh, this is doing this, and it's not fixing anything. And that really pushed me forward to deal with this issue for, you know, helping with uh, the early detection of cancers and these problems so that... Uh, it just could help the world, and people don't have to go through this. It's a horrible thing and humbling to to watch anybody um, go through that and, and uh, pass away because of you've got to save the world. Remember this. How long can you put a bee in a microwave for? There's going to be no more food. Yeah. Girls like chocolate? Yes. There will be no more chocolate. Do you guys like beer? Yes. There will be no more beer. So this should inspire people, you know, beer or Wi-Fi. Guys, it might be a trade-off to do those things, but listen, they'll take the beer. <laughs> so, uh, you know, just wish people a good night, and I hope this is informative. You know, kept the language down again. Thank you very much. Thank you to everybody, and thanks to the Integrative Health Forum for all that they're doing. They are really working behind the scenes more than people know on their own dollar. Uh, to facilitate all this in advance uh, medical education and other education around the world. And I'm looking forward to Dr. Paul and these guys being vindicated 
I mean, because even, like I say, to disrespect them as has been done is just absolutely unacceptable. These brilliant, brilliant minds, you know, they need to be a part of this, and as does their reporting. And I can never thank you enough. I can't even begin to count the hours that you invested in me when I could barely hold the telephone. I've been terrorized by one of the people who was a primary lecturer for the Bioinitiative Report, saying, here's where we draw the line, and everybody below that line is supposed to die. Well, that's not acceptable. And Diane, you... It took you, you two years to gain my confidence that you were better than all these other guys. Well, the, the, the thing is for, you know, and even people would say this to me, They, uh, I, we've actually done work where people have said, Curtis, I can't believe you, you helped me. And I said, they said, you don't like me. I said, I still don't like you. Mm-hmm. I said, but my job is, is to still get it done no matter what. You have to do your job. And so, Diane, you were in, you were in trouble because of these EMFs. And that exposure to it, and it was killing you. Yeah. So we had to intervene, but but people need to know this too, that, you know, we've worked on these issues of stabilizing people and doing those things, but it's not a solution. The EMFs have to stop. Agreed 100%. In mind and proud of you for all you're doing. You're uh, You're just doing a great job. Have a good night. Thank you. You too.